So you got a new DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro and you're excited about shooting in the new D-Log M format, but you don't have any clue on how to grade log footage. I can tell you it's a little bit tricky. A lot of times you can just use a conversion LUT, but honestly, those LUTs just aren't good, at least not to me. So I tend to just color grade it myself. So what I'm going to do is go out and grab some footage and then we're going to go back to the house and I'm going to show you how I grade D-Log M from the DJI Osmo Action 5 Pro. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so now I got my footage. So let's go ahead and jump on the computer and let's start color grading. All right, so here is just a simple clip that I grabbed when I was out. It's just a clip of me and some wood. So you've got, you know, me there with my skin tones and some trees and the sky and all that good stuff. So let's hop over to the color page. And if you look right here, I've already created a LUT that I used to, to convert some of my footage from D-Log so I don't have to go through and do this color grading all over again. But for this tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and do this from scratch. Now, the one thing to remember about log footage is that it's a flat image. So right off the jump, you know there's no contrast and no saturation. And that's where I tend to start at. Now, I always have three nodes for my node trees, no matter what kind of color grading I'm doing. The first one is normally for um, if I'm adjusting uh, some light, like some highlights, some gain, some blacks and things like that. The next one I always have is a contrast and saturation node. And then the third one will always be a curve node. Excuse me, a curve node. So we're going to start with my middle node. That's the contrast and saturation. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and push some saturation back into it. And you can tell what it's doing here, right? So I'm gonna push some saturation back into it like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, excuse me, some contrast. Now I don't know what's wrong with me today. Push some contrast back into it. Now I'm gonna jump over to some saturation. Now with saturation, you gotta be kind of careful, especially with this action cam footage because it'll get crazy on you and it'll start to look just kind of weird. So be careful with your saturation. Go ahead and just adjust it to your liking. Once I get this base done with the contrast and the saturation, then I go back to my first node. Now for me, I like my blacks black. I like them black. So I'm looking at my waveform here. And we all know that uh, zero is black, 100 is, is all white. So. I'll take my lift here and I'm just gonna punch it down some. And boom, there we go with that. Now I'm looking over in this side here and over here and I really just don't like how this is. Now the DJI Osmo Action 5 does have, I believe 15 stops of dynamic range. And it's okay, but it's still a smaller sensor so you know, you're still not gonna get the same 
15 stops of dynamic range that you would from your Canon R5 or something like that. But you still can work with it. So let me go ahead and grab some gain here and turn it down just a little bit. Just a little bit like that. Then we'll bump up the shadows just so I can get my face exposed a little bit better. Boom. All right. So for me, this looks really good. Now I'll go over to my third node here, which I said is my curves. And I'll go ahead and just do the, you know, the good old fashioned S curve. All right. So that's looking okay. Now, I'm gonna create one more node here, and this is where um, things can get a little, little tricky. Uh, I'm gonna grab my qualifier, and I'm gonna put it here. And so what that did is that highlighted my, my skin there. So now I can start to play with some things. So let me go over here, and grab my Victor scope, come back here, jump over to the offset, and let me start to just play with the colors on my face a little bit. Let's see here. I think that works. I think that works a little bit. Now I will go ahead and bump the shadows up on my skin just to brighten up my face a little bit. Give it a little contrast. And because I created this node like this, guys, this is only affecting the area that I selected. So it's not affecting the, the whole image. Yep, I kind of like that. Let me jump back over here. It's just a lot easier for me to see it here, yep. I really kind of like that. So you can see what it, what we started with, and you can see what it graded down to. In my opinion, looks great. Kind of goes along with my color grade. Like I was saying about the um, dynamic range, you can you can tell there's a sky there. You know, nothing too crazy, but you can tell that it's there. So, yep. Yeah. So this is how I would color grade my D-Log M footage. And if I wanted to, if I wanted to save this as a LUT, I could go clips here, right click, and go to generate LUT, and go to the 65 point cube, and then I could save it, you know, wherever I needed to. But I've all, I already have one that I made, so I won't do that now. But this is D-Log M. It's not that difficult once you get used to it, once you play around and get it to your liking. Because remember, this is just how I like to cut a grade my footage. So it might not be your cup of tea. You might like the shadows up a little bit. You might not like your black so black. I don't know, but this is just how I like to do it. So just play around with the settings, tweak it how you need to until you come up with something that's pleasing to you, all right? So man, I appreciate you guys checking out this video. If you watched it all the way through, thank you very much. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, click the bell so you'll know every time I upload a video and drop a like and hop down in the comments, man, and let me know what you guys think. If you guys like D-Log M or if you don't, or if you just prefer to shoot in the standard profiles, all right? But anyway, you guys be blessed and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.